Hello, boys and girls. I'm glad to see you. And today we are going to talk on topic space represented in uh, the unit spotlight on Russia. And uh, let's start. Spotlight on Russia finds out more about Russian space exploration. Russia is no stranger to space. Since the 1950s, Russians have been exploring space and have achieved a spectacular number of firsts. 1957, Sputnik 1 was the first satellite in space. 1957, Laika was the first animal to orbit the Earth. 1961, Yuri Gagarin was the first person in space. 1963, Valentina Tereshkova was the first woman in space. 1965, Alexei Leonov was the first person to walk in space. 1984, Svetlana Savitskaya was the first woman to walk in space rather a significant number of firsts. Don't you think so? And now let's read the text together and uh, we will learn some new information about history of Russia exploring the space. Russia's space program continues to set itself new targets. At present, it has three main aims. The first is to send three manned missions to the moon. The second objective is to build a permanent base on the moon to tap its energy resources. And last but not least, its third goal is to dispatch a Russian crew to Mars, also known as the Red Planet, sometime between 2020 and 2030. Of course, space travel does not come cheap. While the Russian government has given $2 billion to the program, private investment is also needed. Some money has been raised through offering tourist trips into space. Russia was the first country to offer this type of travel and to date four people have traveled as tourists into space each paying 20 million for the privilege. With its many firsts, Russia has been a pioneer in space exploration and has earned its place among the stars. Apart from technology and investment, the space program needs cosmonauts. Do you aspire to new heights? Okay, now we have learned some new facts and let's practice writing them together. Imagine you want to tell your English pen friend about Russia's history in space. Use the information in the text to tell the class. How should we start? Dear John, sorry for not answering you that long. I was busy investigating some questions on the topic that I'm keen on. It is space exploration. Actually speaking, I've got to know that there are three main targets for Russia to accomplish the new program of space exploration. To end three manned missions to the moon, to build a permanent base on the moon to tap its energy resources, to dispatch Russian crew to Mars between 2020 and 2030. That's great. It goes without saying that private investment is also needed. For that purpose, money is being raised through tourist trips into space. Each trip costs $20 million. Russia needs cosmonauts. Would you like to be one? What do you think of becoming a cosmonaut? Looking forward to your reply. 
kind regards, Anna. And our next aim is to collect information about your favorite Russian space hero or heroine using the internet. Write a short article and I would recommend you to make a presentation. So let's start making a presentation together. And here you can see a photo of the most recent Russian hero, Sergei Valerievich Prokopiev. So he was born in Sverdlovsk, the USSR, or now it is Yekaterinburg. And the most recent hero of Russian Federation is Sergei Valerievich Prokopiev. On the 6th of June 2018, he launched on his first flight into space aboard Soyuz MS-09. He spent 196 days in space as a flight engineer on Expedition 5657. You can find more information about this national hero or any other person that inspires you. Now let's practice speaking part together. We will discuss the next, the following topic. Would you like to be a cosmonaut? And please explain using arguments why or why not. Please remember that the structure of the argument consists of four parts. Thesis, proof, example, and comeback. Напомню вам, что структура аргумента состоит из четырех частей. Утверждение, доказательство, пример, возврат к теме, то есть к утверждению. We will talk about I would like to be a cosmonaut or I wouldn't like to be a cosmonaut. So let's start. First, we should give the thesis. It can sound like that. It is interesting for me to explore the space. Or it is boring for me to explore the space. Or the, the following way. It's an honor for me to have an opportunity to become a cosmonaut. Or maybe it should sound like that. It's captivating for almost anybody to explore the space, the galaxies, the planets, and other objects there. Or it's a great chance for a person to become a cosmonaut. You can create your own thesis as you want. The next part is giving the proof. Because следующая часть это доказательство вашего утверждения, потому что и здесь мы с вами вспомним тему условных предложения, условных наклонений. Всего четыре типа предложений с условным наклонением. 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. Zero – conditional sentence. It is a truth. Это правда, истина. Предложение Условным наклонением состоит из двух частей. Первая часть – это условие, которое начинается с if, союза if. Вторая часть – это следствие. И мы видим, что в нулевом типе условного предложения в обеих частях мы используем глагол во времени present simple. Becomes, spends. If a person becomes a cosmonaut, he spends most of the time learning how to operate various experiments. Если человек становится космонавтом, он проводит большую часть времени, изучая, как работать с разными экспериментами. Это правда. Becomes, spends. Both parts contain present simple. Предложение первого типа. Здесь мы модулируем некую ситуацию в будущем. И в отличие от русского языка, где в обеих частях мы используем будущее время, в части условия все еще остается время present simple. А вот в части следствия мы уже используем будущее время. Сравните. Becomes, will spend. If a person becomes a cosmonaut, he will spend most of the time learning how to operate various experiments. 
Если некий человек станет космонавтом, он будет проводить большую часть времени, изучая, как работать с различными экспериментами. Becomes will spend. Следующий тип. Тип условных предложений 2. If I became a cosmonaut, I would spend most of the time learning how to operate various experiments. Этот тип называется воображаемая ситуация. Мы не знаем, исполнится она или нет, мы просто воображаем. На русский язык это передается частицей бы. Если бы я стал космонавтом, я бы проводил большее количество времени, изучая, как работать с разными экспериментами. В первой части past simple, во второй would плюс инфинитив. Would plus infinitive. Past simple became would plus infinitive. Would spend. И предложение третьего типа. Когда мы говорим, также воображаем некую ситуацию, но она нереальна на данный момент к исполнению и вообще в целом нереальна. В этом случае для отражения нереальности мы используем past perfect в части условия. If I had become a cosmonaut, если я бы стал космонавтом, I would have spent most of the time learning how to operate various experiments. Я бы провел большую часть времени, изучая то, как работать с различными экспериментами. Казалось бы, условное предложение типа 2 и типа 3 совпадают в переводе на русский язык, но условное предложение типа 2 — это воображаемая ситуация, где не имеет значения, реально она или нет. А вот условное предложение типа 3 — это заранее известная нереальная ситуация. Если бы я стал космонавтом, я бы проводил большую часть времени, изучая работу с различными экспериментами. Но тут как бы в скобках хочется добавить «но не стал». Мы также можем выразить данное, данную мысль при помощи конструкции «I wish», которая передается на русский язык, при помощи э, выражения «как бы я хотел». И здесь есть также два э, варианта развития событий – реальный и нереальный. Реальный будет звучать «I wish I would become a cosmonaut so that I could spend». Как бы я хотел стать космонавтом, имею в виду, что еще есть возможность. Или I wish I would have become a cosmonaut so that I, that I could have spent. Как бы я хотел стать космонавтом и проводить время. Но имею в виду то, что уже этим заниматься не придется. Итак, данный тип предложений в различных вариациях вы можете использовать в своем высказывании. Let's move further. Given the proof, I would like to be a cosmonaut. What sentences can you use here? What arguments can you use here? Like to challenge to get out into strange, hostile environments. To spend most of the time learning how to operate various experiments. Use the robot arm, build and maintain the International Space Station and do spacewalks or maybe to forge new and unprecedented diplomatic relationships between countries while getting engineers with different backgrounds and traditions to work together. Or maybe some global issues like to ultimately help to stimulate global economies and maybe to face new possibilities for the future life, why not? You can add and be more argumentative while quoting somebody, like using a quotation. For example, a famous scientist Stephen Hawking once said, I don't think the human race will survive the next thousand years unless we spread it in space. There are too many accidents that can befall life on a single planet. But I'm an optimist. We will reach out to the stars And uh, you can use reported speech, like he said that the human race would survive the next thousand years unless we spread into space. He underlined that there were too many accidents that could befall life on a single planet. And 
you can also add some sentence like summing up. So exploring the space would help to face new possibilities for the life in the future. Also, we should give the example. For instance, due to exploration of the space, a lot of new technologies have been developed lately. 3D printing, highway safety, video enhancing and analysis systems. And uh, sure, you should give a comeback to the physics with the help of such like expressions. Thus, I can admit, or I should admit, or I have to admit. Or thus I can say, I should say, I have to say that. And you can repeat the, your thesis here. So let's sum up everything and let's practice speaking together. I would like to be a cosmonaut. It's captivating for almost anybody to explore the space, the galaxies, the planets, and other objects there. If I became a cosmonaut, I would do spacewalks and spend most of the time learning how to operate various experiments. Besides, once Stephen Hawking said that the human race would survive the next thousand years unless we spread into space. He underlined that there were too many accidents that could befall life on a single planet. I can only add that our planet would probably face new possibilities for the future life. What is more, due to exploration of the space, a lot of new technologies have been developed lately. 3D printing, highway safety, video enhancing and analysis systems. Thus, I can definitely say that it's an honor for me to have an opportunity to become a cosmonaut. That was great, wasn't it? And our last target, our last objective is to be able to write a short essay and answer the questions. Spotlight on Russia would like to know what its readers think of space exploration. The questions are, where would you like to go in space? What would you like to do there? Send your suggestions and we'll put the best one on our website for the whole world to see. Boys and girls, thank you very much for your attention. I wish you success. Goodbye.